So something you may have noticed about reactions in general, not even just in this class, is that they don't tend to happen at room temperature, or at least people don't build chemical plants to make stuff happen at room temperature. Stuff that happens at room temperature is stuff that we just, you know, live with and deal with. Uh, but the rate of most reactions at room temperature is pretty slow. Now rate is a problem for kinetics class, which is coming up next semester. Um, but also some reactions just are not thermodynamically favorable either at room temperature. And that is the case, in fact, with our model reaction, which is why we are progressing to figuring out how the heck can we change temperature of reaction. So 298 is lovely and all, uh, but lots of stuff happens uh, at colder reactions that we, or colder temperatures that we have to pay attention to. And then many of the reactions we want to proceed in the forward direction, we give them a kick by uh, cooking them up at an elevated temperature. So we need to change the temperature. We can't just keep using delta G of formation as it comes at 298 straight out of the back of the book. So here's how we do that. We use something called the Van't Hoff equation. Uh, and the Van't Hoff equation is pretty much integrating delta G from standard temperature to uh, whatever our reaction temperature is going to be, be it higher or lower. So here it goes, delta G uh, of reaction adjusted for temperature divided by RT is equal to negative the integral from the reference temperature to the reaction temperature of uh, delta H uh, over RT squared DT plus delta G reference, so the one that you got from the back of the book, divided by RT reference. Okay, and that delta H um, there is the delta H of reaction adjusted for temperature. So it's adjusted in that same way we learned how to do that in reaction energy balances. Again, you can watch the video on that, where we're pretty much integrating, uh, we're taking the um, standard state delta H for the reaction and then integrating CPDT for that between the standard temperature of 298 and whatever temperature the reaction happens. And you'll recall that we said, unless you had a very considerable temperature difference, most of the time, delta H of reaction was fine being uh, delta H ref, right? Because delta H uh, at the reference temperature is usually several orders of magnitude bigger than the CP delta T part, than the sensible heat part. It really starts to be appreciable <clears throat> well, it depends on what components you have in your mixture, but often if you're only changing temperatures by uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees, it's small with respect to the delta H of reaction. Uh, so we have two choices here to, uh, to deal with our changing delta G. A, if we have a big delta T, so I'm going to say in general, over 50 degrees, certainly over 100 degrees. We're going to do a detailed uh, calculation that takes into account uh, CPDT over this entire range. And we have a tool for doing this. It's called kcalc.xls. It comes with your book. And there's a separate video on how to use that. And it is a marvelous tool that saves us a lot of fiddling around with huge long equations that don't really tell us that much. Option B, if we don't have that much of a temperature change, or if we're in a hurry, we're on a test where, you know, we're working by hand and we have to get an estimate, we do what's called the shortcut Van't Hoff equation, which I'll talk to you about on the next slide. So the shortcut Van't Hoff equation is making the assumption that the, uh, the delta H of reaction is the most, imp uh, standard state delta H of reaction is the largest part of uh, the entire enthalpy change as the reaction occurs, and that it's okay to kind of ignore the CPDT part. So again, this is uh, pretty true if you are talking about relatively small temperature changes, um, and also true for larger temperature changes for certain chemicals where that CPDT part is not that impactful, is not using a lot of energy. Um, for us, this is going to be most useful to get a quick estimate um, 
and then we will do a full calculation using a handy tool such as KCALC XLS or uh, using HISIS. You can do it by hand. You won't really learn much. You're just going to be writing the integral of CPDT a heck of a lot for each of the components in your mixture in the reaction. Okay, so what does shortcut Van Hoff look like? It always gives you a nice estimate of what you're doing. Uh, it's the natural log of K, uh, the reaction constant, at the temperature you're interested in, divided by K at the reference temperature, and it's equal to uh, delta H at the reference temperature, so for us, O is 298K, uh, negative that delta H, divided by R times uh, 1 over T that we're interested in, minus 1 over T ref, which again will always be 298. Keep in mind, looking at this equation, you've always got to be using uh, temperatures in K, right, Kelvin, because you can't have 1 over 0 and expect to get a number out of it. Um, and so this is quite a handy little equation, and it's a good way to get an estimate of what we think the energetics are. So just a reminder, we use it for small delta T, um, and it is useful for when you need to do your work kind of by hand, uh, that is not while doing, um, you know, with just you and your calculator, and when you don't have access to some sort of fancy thing like HISIS or a spreadsheet. Finally, we come to today's problem of the day. Now, something you've probably noticed is our reaction, even though I keep telling you methane uh, being reformed by steam is industrially important, you've probably noticed, if you've done the calculations correctly, that it just does not proceed at room temperature. And this, in fact, is something you know from experience if you've ever been around natural gas. If you get a little water on natural gas, you don't suddenly have poisonous carbon monoxide and even more explosive hydrogen floating around, right? Like we don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, steam reformation of methane does not proceed in the forward direction uh, under 298K uh, one atmosphere, just not a thing. So my question to you for today is using uh, our ways of changing temperature, can you figure out a temperature at which uh, the steam reformation of methane proceeds from reactants towards products to an appreciable extent? You get to pick what that extent is. Um, what temperature does that start happening at? Okay, so I want you to reflect and think about that, and I want to encourage you strongly to start setting up a spreadsheet where you can uh, change composition, uh, where you can change temperature, where you could even change some other things coming up, such as pressure, and solve for the resulting uh, mole fractions that you get on the product side. And why is that? Because the culmination of the reaction subunit is going to be a game uh, wherein you are trying to run this reaction in a profitable chemical plant. And we'll, uh, we'll think about that. So remember, you're starting right now with two moles of uh, methane, one mole, or two moles of methane, four moles of steam, and one mole each of hydrogen and CO. And uh, that won't always be the case. So right now that's the case. Maybe make that in your spreadsheet uh, something that you could change because we will want to change with it later, uh, change it later. But for these conditions, go seek a temperature at which we start getting products. And what is it that happens at that temperature? So that what I mean by that is mathematically at that temperature, um, is that when delta G becomes zero? Is it when K becomes one? Is it something else? Uh, so Think about that, take some notes, try a bunch of different temperatures, and because, uh, here is a hint, the shortcut method is uh, not going to work. We're going to need to travel more than 100 degrees from 298, so I advise you to uh, watch that video on how kcalc works and use kcalc in combination with your own spreadsheet to answer this question.